Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week I got a lot of things that I need to take care of. Little things, some of them. One of them, relatively large thing, and that is maybe try to fire this truck up for the first time. So we'll see. Not 100% for sure we'll get to that point, but I'm going to shoot for that. Now, also I've got some maintenance that I need to do to the the do all vertical band saw. We need to do a, a belt change on it, a little bit of just general maintenance. Also, I gotta do a little bit of work on the truck as well. So thanks for watching. Let's get started. So one of the first things that I wanna take care of is mounting what will soon be my antifreeze overflow jug or the puke tank, I guess you'd call it. And I guess I'm gonna mount it on this side right here. So I need to come up with a bracket to mount this to. Now really this should go on the other side where you know the antifreeze puke spout is, but the problem is that there's just no room on the other side and it looks good right there, in my opinion. So let's see if we can't come up with a bracket and, uh, and mount this tank. So the idea here, at least my idea, is to make a platform, just a piece, take a piece of aluminum and mount it here, nice flat mounting surface and secure that to the radiator support and then secure this tank to that mount. I think that'll give me the, I don't know, the best mounting surface, maybe the cleanest looking installation without working too awful hard, right? So I've got a piece of eighth inch aluminum over here. Let's get started and see if we can't, you know, make us a platform. I think what I'm gonna do is start off with a little CAD work and uh, you'll get my platform just kind of roughed out in cardboard and then you know move on to the aluminum big Still too big. Yeah, yes, yes. I think something like that is going to work, and then I could just mount it at the bottom. You know, mount it at the top, mount it at the bottom. Of course, it'll look better than a piece of cardboard there. And I think that's going to do it. So I don't have a lot of thin aluminum laying around. This is a piece of eighth inch, 6061. Needs a good cleanup. It's obviously been used for something else in the past. Who knows? So we need a piece that is 12 inches by 7 inches. And that'll get us started. So square. Uh, not really. So I mentioned I got some maintenance to do on this fine piece of equipment. And what we're going to be doing is changing the belts. I've got two brand new belts here. The ones that are on it, they squeak for one and they're all cracked up. So definitely time for a replacement. Quite annoying when they, let's see if, the, see if it squeaks. See? Anyway, we'll change the belts. We'll also check uh, all the fluids because it's been a while since I've done that. Since we're cutting aluminum, we are gonna crank our way up. on our air. And make some cuts.
this really is an awesome piece of equipment. Where is my center punch? Well, crud. So I am definitely going to get one of those. It looks like a pop rivet gun, but it sets the threaded inserts into thin sheet metal. That's really how this should be mounted to that core support. But I don't have one. I've been wanting to get one forever. Just, you know, how it goes. I haven't got around to doing it. That would be ideal in mounting this. So that's pretty neat. Um, you can go down like you're going to drill and just push on the handle and it drills itself unless you push it hard and then it locks. So that's neat. You can uh, power drill just by pushing in the handle a bit or you can lock it. Very nice. So there we go, plates mounted. I'm gonna take it off and paint it. I don't like the look of self-tapper screws, but it's all I've got right now. Yeah, to be honest, it would look better with just some pop rivets, right? But I don't own a pop rivet gun either. So I had to come up with one of those, but for now, right? This is perfectly fine. And transferring one hole and then I will uh, get this off of here and square it up with the bracket and put the other ones in it. She's doing really good. She was sitting under that bell because it's raining.
Little Clover is grown up now. Pretty, and on her own now. She's on her own 100%. So there we go. Nothing to it really. Mounted that sheet of aluminum. And that's going to have to work for now. Those ugly uh, self tappers. I think a couple pop rivets would look, uh, would look best. But it's definitely on there solid. So there we go. I got to get me some line. I've got a temporary piece of the line ran so I can actually use it. But you get the idea. Looks pretty good. And I like, I like the location. So check out my exhaust. I would consider that finished minus uh, the hangers. I still got to take care of that. Also got to trim these pipes to final length and I'm going to wait till I get the bed on to do that. And they'll also get raised up about, uh, about three inches. So that looks pretty good, pretty good. And I'm ready to hear what this thing is going to sound like. It's, it's exciting. Well, it's time for the moment of truth. I guess I'm ready to fire this thing up or to attempt to fire this thing up and see if it will actually run or not. Now I'm not going to run this thing long if it will run at all uh, because I don't want to... It's a brand, it's a fresh engine, brand new. If you've watched the videos you know I've had this thing down to the bare block and rebuilt it completely from the bottom up. And I don't want to idle this thing around being brand new. When I run it for any extended amount of time I want to be putting it under load out on the road, putting you know some pressure on the cylinders getting those rings to seat really well. But it won't hurt anything to fire this up for, for just a few minutes to make sure that it is mechanically, you know, it, it's gonna be mechanically sound or not. Right now I've got a Holley 600 CFM carburetor on here that was sent to me by a viewer. It is too small for this engine long term, but it'll run it, you know, for, for, some, for a little bit of testing uh, anyway. And in the coolant system, I've just got straight water. I always do that when I do something like this, simply because if it doesn't work and you got to pull it back out, you're not out a bunch of coolant or a bunch, it'd have a bunch of mess. So let's prime this fuel system and, uh, you know, see if this thing will fire up. I'm hoping that it does. And I'm really curious to see how the exhaust sounds. So we got a fire extinguisher handy. Also got the headlights. Straightened out, wired up. Looking good. I wonder if it's going to pull fuel. I've just got the mechanical fuel pump hooked up and I'm going to run a line down in the jug and then got uh, a little bit of, you know, two cycle engine oil, engine oil, two cycle gasoline there to prime this thing off with. So let's see if we can't uh, fire this thing up. That's a good sign. Try that again. It'll take a minute for it to get fuel up to the carb. It's pumping. 
We got a little fuel in my little filter here. I'll show you. A little fuel resting in the bottom there. Awesome. That's first time it's run. That is awesome. Thanks. Yeah, it's okay. That is so awesome. It got it warm. Yep. That's what I want to do. Just get it up, get it up, let it get up to temperature a bit. So it feels awesome to hear this thing fire off and the engine sounds really good. I don't notice any you know, weird noises or anything like that, it, it actually sounds really good. It won't idle for nothing, but I think that has to do with the carburetor that's on it. Now, it would idle if this carburetor was good. There's, there's nothing, no, nothing, no issue there. I believe this carburetor has some debris or something in it that's clogged up the idle circuit on it. Runs fine when you're, you know, working the accelerator pump, but if you let off, it just basically acts like you shut the fuel off altogether. So I believe that it has some debris or something in the carburetor. Now this carburetor was a gift by, by a viewer. 100% appreciate it. Viewer didn't know much about this carburetor. You know, he just gave it to me to get to this point here and I appreciate that. So I believe I'm going to pull this carburetor off and see if I can't go through it, see if I can't find 
you know, what the deal is with the idle circuit on it. That winch is handy. So this thing is now running good. I originally thought outside, because I couldn't get this thing to idle, that the carburetor was dirty. Well, Pulled it in here, pulled the carb off, immediately found that my base gasket for my carburetor was completely sheared into, causing a major vacuum leak or air leak in between the carburetor and the intake, and that's that's why it wouldn't at all. This carburetor is not designed to fit on this intake like like I've got it. I ended up making a uh, I cleaned the carburetor simply because I pulled it off for that reason, uh, and ended up making a custom base to seal this thing up to this intake and now it runs and idles excellent. Sounds great. It's not overheating. We don't have any water leaks, no oil leaks, no exhaust leaks. Uh, oil still looks good and clean. It's not getting metal flake or anything in it that I can tell, right, just by wiping the dipstick on a uh, you know, on a uh, clean rag. Once we run this thing quite a bit though, run this break-in oil through its course. I'll pull this oil filter off and cut it open and look inside of it to make sure that I don't have any, any metal debris because I always think that's a good idea on a fresh motor. Because if you do have any metal debris in your filter, you'll know that failure is soon to come and sometimes you can get away with pulling the motor back out, tearing it down, you know, finding the problem and fixing it before it trashes the whole thing. So, I don't think that's going to be the case, but, you know, it's still a good practice to do. Got my timing set up. We're at about 11 or 12 degrees. It's where, by ear, you know, it's seeming to, to want to idle. Got the vacuum advance unplugged, and I believe that this distributor, mechanical advance-wise, has about 22 degrees in it. So we should be around 30, 32 degrees total, total advance, I think. You know, wide open. Super excited with the way that this thing sounds. It sounds amazing. It's a little loud exhaust wise, but doesn't vibrate. It runs nice and smooth. All that good stuff. You know, no rattles and carrying on. You know, as of right now, I'll knock on some wood, but it seems like it's going to be good. Um, I don't want to idle around this thing too long uh, simply because I don't think that's a really good idea with a new engine. I really think, at least in my train of thought, is it's a good idea to take it out on the road, put it under moderate load, get some compression and some pressure on them cylinders, and uh, push those rings out against the cylinder walls and give them the best chance possible to, to seat. Because if they don't seat, it's going to consume oil forever and 
you know, it's just not going to perform like it should. It's going to use oil, just all kinds of bad things that you don't want. We're not getting much blow by at all through the vent, though. I think we're, you know, good. And I see a little, excuse me, a little bit of, you know, uh, smoke coming out of the vents, but that's, that's normal. Uh, nothing excessive. And that should slow down as these rings bed into the cylinder walls. Just charging good. And uh, what else? You know, I'm just super, super excited. This thing is awesome. And I think that it's going to make a great, great engine. So I had to move the move my plugs around, did a little skip uh, on the uh, distributor cap there because I could not advance the timing where I wanted to get it because of the vacuum advance canister on the on the side of the uh, distributor coming in contact with this intake. So I had to move my wires around to get uh, the timing uh, numbers that I wanted. So. I am super, super excited. Now this carburetor, uh, even though it's it's a good carburetor, it's just it is too small for this. If you do the math, it, this is going to require around a 750, uh, you know, just because of its cubic inches, uh, to to have peak, you know, performance. But for now, just idling around, it'll be fine. I do have some awesome stuff coming up in the future in regards to the system on this thing. We'll talk about that later. But I am stoked and relieved, believe me, uh, because there is a lot that can go wrong when you build one of these from the ground up. But so far, so good. So it's not looking like I'm gonna get to do the dual bandsaw maintenance like I was really hoping to when this video started. I just don't have the time to devote to it and do a good job and film it uh, like I would like to, to and get this video out this week. So we'll just have to stop it here and consider this video a first run uh, for for the truck, which you know, is pretty pretty nice and quite a load off my shoulders to know that that it does run good. At first, you know, I thought it had an idle circuit issue in the carburetor, and that's the reason why it wouldn't idle. But come to find out, it's just a base gasket, so no no big deal. I just guess I didn't tighten that carburetor down quite good enough uh, originally. Plus, the that carburetor, the base of it, uh, really needs an adapter plate, which I made a you know, a quick one uh, so it would seal up good just to get us by for now. And maybe next week, if we're lucky, week, next week or week after next, we'll take this thing out on the road. I gotta get the doors on it, get some seat belts in it, right? Get it at least road legal, and we'll take it out on the road and, uh, and run it around a bit, maybe, you know, break it in. So I guess that's it this week. Man, I'm super, super stoked that this thing runs as good as what it does. There's just so much that can go wrong. When it all goes right, you know, it's, it's a big relief, especially after, after all the work that we've done on this thing. You know, it's, it's a load off my shoulders, I'll say that. So when we take this thing out on the road for the first time, I'll be sure to take you guys with me, and it'll be pretty exciting, I think. Um, to get to ride behind or get to ride in a truck, you know, that, uh, that you, know, you built uh, on your own. It's pretty, pretty neat. So that's it, I guess, for this week anyway. So thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever, much appreciated. And I'll see you next time.